I'm Natalie. And I'm Chloe. And we live in this old school bus. This week we're staying at a wild camping spot right next to the Foley River. Wild camping means we don't have access to common amenities, such as potable water, electricity, showers, toilets, or even cell signal. That means it's 100% free. As Canadian citizens, we can stay on Crown Land for 21 days, but how are we supposed to stay out here without any amenities? We'll show you how we're doing it. two 100 watt solar panels that go into our 100 amp hour lithium ion battery. Our battery has Bluetooth so we can monitor its life through this app. We're at 66%. And if we don't get enough sun, we've got backup. We found a 250 watt Jackery on Facebook Marketplace and it's working great for us so far. But what if we run out of water? We're surrounded by it. But this river is way too fast to collect from! Luckily there's a creek nearby and so we're able to collect this freezing cold glacier water with our collapsible water jug. We just pour it into our rain fresh and then it comes out clean. Some people have showers inside of their vehicles but we simply do not have the space. We shower outside! We fill this water in the creek and then we leave it in the sun for three hours or something and now it's all warm! Can't beat that view. Can you hear me? There's no signal out here. We also have a trusty satellite phone so that we can message our friends and family letting them know how we are and where we are. Also, it comes equipped with an SOS button for emergency situations. We dig holes six inches down in the ground and then we poop with them. Then we bury them. It's a good system. We can cook in our bus on our propane oven slash stove, but in the warmer months, we prefer to cook over fire! Should I tell them what happened? Yeah, maybe. Alright, we were at that campsite and we loved it and we stayed there for two nights and it was amazing. But right now it's the May long weekend and everyone and their mother is coming into town but mostly the boys but mostly the boys going on their I, I guess hunting trips this morning we heard a very scary gunshot and it's not hunting season so that made us a little nervous and then so many people drove by then a huge group of guys drove by probably already drunk speeding down this bumpy road and there are a bunch of boys in this truck, including in the back of the truck, just bouncing around. And they were catcalling us, and yelling, and just screaming. And we thought, oh, okay, that sucks. And then a man stopped at our campsite, and he was nice, but it just made us a little unnerved. He was lost, and he wanted to know how to get to the road. But it just kind of freaked us out after everything that had happened. Also, a tree branch fell down in our campsite in the exact spot that we used to be parked. We moved today so we would get more solar and a tree branch fell exactly where we were parked. So we thought, oh gosh, that could have hit us. And then we thought maybe this tree wasn't safe and there's supposed to be a storm coming. And it just felt like a lot of things like were adding up to make us feel unsafe, gunshots, scary men, people talking to us and tree branches falling. And now we're leaving. Um, and we thought, you know, if we're uncomfortable right now with all the people that are showing up, this is Thursday of the May long weekend. That means there's going to be Friday, Saturday, um, and then Sunday that we will have to exist probably with, with more people maybe coming and making us feel anxious and uncomfortable. So we're just going to leave now. Um, and stay with a friend who lives about 45 minutes away. Beverly is not happy, but Beverly's never really happy, so 
We're supposed to trust our gut. That's what everyone says when you look up videos of like how to stay safe as a solo female or whatever in van life. And it's always trust your gut. You have a spidey sense for a reason. Oh, also we were 400 meters away from a correctional facility um, just across the river from us. And I know that, you know, people in there, like they've done a bad thing, but they probably don't want to hurt us. And also they're locked away and there's a river between us. But I don't know, it just felt like too many things and all of a sudden it felt like the beginning of a horror movie and I was the dumb main character who was like, oh, it's fine. You know, and, and you're you're watching the movie and you're like, it's not fine, get out of there. So we're getting out of there. It makes me feel angry that the, these people who are coming in from whatever small town they're from near here, they probably do this a lot. Um, like get drunk and ride on their trucks and scream at women and maybe they're screaming at everybody but it just sucks that they can make us feel so scared and it makes me not want to leave it makes me feel like I shouldn't leave because then they've won and maybe that's not the best reason to stay somewhere if you don't feel safe because you want to like prove that you, you do feel safe but if you don't feel safe you don't feel safe so that's just also, we have no service, and our satellite phone has kind of been spotty. Like, it, 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 it takes 30 minutes to send one message, and it needs to be, like, outside and in a very upright position, and it won't send the messages that we just write. It'll only send the messages that we pre-programmed in. And the satellite phone was something that was supposed to make me feel safe, so when it when it wasn't working the way I wanted it to, that really didn't make me feel safe at all. Anyway, um, as soon as I get service, I'm gonna call my family friend and hopefully we can stay with her or we've got a long drive back to Vancouver. The other thing is we've been having a problem with our bus that we thought we fixed, where it doesn't start right away or it, like it does start but then it peters out and dies. And that tends to happen if we've left the engine for more than a couple of hours without starting it. So if something were to happen bad in the middle of the night, and we felt like we had to get out of there right away and the engine died and we had to wait 20 minutes to start it again, that would just be unacceptable. So anyway, just a list of reasons. Hi, yeah, we're just editing and um, we made it to my family friend's house in Langley. So that's awesome. And it's beautiful here and she's so nice and very hospitable. So we're staying the long weekend here and then we're gonna try again once all the crowds die down. Instead of a wild camping spot, we're gonna go to a recreation site next to a lake so we can swim and not worry about being swept up by that massive river and it won't be so loud. The audio was crazy at the beginning, sorry about that. Rivers are loud. Anyway, we want to say thank you so much for watching and uh, we're excited to show you where we stay next time. Say goodbye, Beverly. Bev, say goodbye. Goodbye.